Hi everyone, good Wednesday evening to you. It is 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here with Weather for Weather Geeks. It was a beautiful, almost, you know, I would say picture-perfect spring day out there today. We got off to a chilly start, yes, but uh, just a glorious afternoon with the warm temperatures and low humidity. 76 on the high side today after starting at 40 this morning at the airport. Some local thermometers did hit 37 or 38 first thing this morning. Interesting looking at the record book today. The uh, record high was set in 1985. And a year later, on this same date, we had a record low, uh, 85, the record high in 1985, and in 1986, we started out at a crisp 25 degrees on April the 23rd. Our high of 76 today makes it three warmer than average days in a row, and five of our last six days have been warmer than the average. And after that real chilly stretch during the second week of the month, we're almost back to average for the month as a whole, factoring in both highs and lows. We're just under a degree now in terms of how far below average we are temperature-wise. I think we're going to finish the month uh, with a warmer-than-average outcome here in the month of April because we've got more warmth coming our way during the last few days of the month early next week. But you take the good with the bad, of course, when it comes to all things weather. And one of the one of the bad things about this time of the year is everything greens up quickly. It's it's really getting uh, fast out there, how, how, you know, how rapid things are greening up and the grass is growing and trees are blooming. And yeah, it's, it's pollen season, no doubt. And tree pollen will be especially high for the rest of April and a good chunk of May as well. In our part of the country, tree pollen tends to peak um, towards the tail end, maybe the last week to 10 days of the month of May. We start to see an uptick in grass pollen in May as well. It usually peaks in June into early July. And then uh, ragweed pollen uh, typically peaks later in the summer and early in the fall season. So if you're an allergy sufferer, you may not be so thrilled with things greening up as fast as they are right now. But otherwise, of course, the weather remains pretty darn nice this evening. If you, real quickly before sunset this evening, look off into the northern sky, if you've got a clear view, view of the northern horizon, you might see some towering uh, cumulus clouds, cumulonimbus clouds almost. We've lost the lightning and thunder, but we had a couple of renegade showers and storms moving across Lake Erie late this afternoon. And early this evening and right before sunset this evening, you might be able to check out some taller clouds on the distant northern horizon. The much bigger chance for thunderstorms, including the threat for severe weather this evening, lies along the western parts of Kansas into the Oklahoma panhandle, the Texas panhandles as well. We've had some big hail-producing storms out there. And, you know, severe weather season often reaches a crescendo as we go into the mid to late spring period with the tornado risk and the overall severe weather risk continuing to shift off to the north as we go from March into April. Around eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania, we typically see our most active times in terms of frequency of severe weather um, during the second half of May and the first half of June as well. And even though we have no severe weather chances coming in the next handful of days, I did want to do a check-in on monthly preliminary tornado reports so far in 2025. We say preliminary because sometimes, uh, you know, when, when the evidence is gone over completely, some uh, tornadoes are determined not to have been tornadoes, and the opposite is true. Sometimes tornado uh, damage is found uh, or confirmed well after the uh, fact. But here's where we stand preliminarily so far uh, through the first three and a half months of the uh, year 14 in Ohio and 8 in Pennsylvania, and the rest of the states on here are at the top of the list for uh, tornado reports um, so far in the year. The leader in the clubhouse easily, Mississippi, at 96 tornadoes. That is a lot of tornadoes for a state that, you know, it's medium size. It's not huge. But of course, uh, this is prime, you know, Dixie Alley, what we call it down in here, from the Mississippi Valley down into the Gulf Coast region. Um, this area is more and more becoming more dominant when it comes to tornadic activity than the traditional tornado alley out here. We've seen evidence of that in the last few decades as the Gulf of Mexico has continued to warm along with the rest of the uh, major bodies of water across the uh, across the planet. Uh, we've seen more moisture transport into some of these states and that is no doubt aided somewhat in the uh, uptick in tornadic activity in many of those states. Again, no severe weather expected around here over the next few days. Wow, was it going to be a great day on Thursday? Uh, not as cool in the morning. 40s to around 50 as we start the day. 80, 81, 82 degrees before the day is through. Warm front approaches then as we go into Thursday night and into Friday morning. Model doesn't show much, but there could be a shower. And I'm becoming more and more convinced that Friday is not going to be a very super active day. We might even lower our rain chances in our forecast for Friday. Now, we're going to be fair game to see a passing shower or a thunderstorm, yes. But it's probably not going to be 
the kind of day that it looked like it would be a couple of days ago. I, I think most of the activity is, is going to be Friday night with the uh, approach and then passage of the uh, cold front. And we'll see the last of the raindrops trying to push out during the first few hours of daylight Saturday morning. The rest of Saturday, though, pretty cool and clammy with clouds lingering much of the uh, day. Rainfall totals over the next 72 hours, so this takes us through uh, Saturday evening, so it'll capture all of the rain that's coming with uh, the approach of our front and then the passage of the front. So we're looking at probably a good half an inch as far as a, an area-wide average uh, in our rainfall expectations. This will be pretty showery in nature, um, so you know your results can vary depending on location, but a good region-wide average will be about a half of an inch worth of rain. So the upcoming weekend, looking like this, it's the final weekend of April. It'll feel more like early March on Saturday. We've lowered our temperature forecast to 53 on Saturday. Maybe one of those days where you know we we drop to 48, 49, 50 in the morning. It might climb a couple of degrees. That's about it for the day as a whole. There's some weather modeling that would suggest we drop into the 40s Saturday morning and stay in the 40s all day. We're not quite ready to bite on that just yet, but. Either way, this is going to be a distinctly different day than the preceding few days. Luckily, though, we can salvage easily the second half of the weekend. It's going to be a very nice day on Sunday. Wall-to-wall -wall sunshine and high temperatures returning to the mid-60s. All right, so next week we've got another system heading east. And while I don't think uh, severe weather is all that likely around here, it may be a concern for a couple of days, especially to our west on Monday specifically. The uh, Storm Prediction Center has outlined a, a risk area here for severe weather along the Missouri River Valley up into uh, parts of the upper Mississippi Valley as well. And this risk will probably translate a little farther to the east on Tuesday. A place like Indianapolis, Chicago, St. Louis, down to Dallas. Um, late in the day Tuesday into Tuesday night, that may be our turn in far eastern Ohio and western PA. But if the current modeling is to be believed, uh, the system will, will undergo some weakening coming east. So the Storm Prediction Center does not have a severe weather risk defined for day 8, which is next Wednesday. Now, that's a week away. We've got a lot of time to, you know, iron out the details and talk about the timing of the front, but I, you know, I suspect there will be some severe weather risks to our west on Tuesday and probably a much lower chance in our part of the region as that cold front rolls east. Now, that cold front will bring probably a, a significant cool down, but just for probably a day or two during the middle of next week, we've got a good shot at seeing 80 ahead of the system on Tuesday. So, you know, it's a beautiful day, it's a beautiful evening, but we've got plenty of things to look at and talk about this evening on Weather for Weather Geeks and for the rest of the week as well. Make it a great rest of your night, and I'll see you right back here Thursday evening.